Riders can be fast and safe. The two are not mutually exclusive. Today, we're gonna to cover the top seven tips to becoming a faster, safer rider. Hi, I'm Dave with canchasers.net. Do you wanna be a faster rider, but at the same time, you don't wanna crash? Or maybe you have crashed, and now you get a little bit nervous when the speeds kinda of come up. Or maybe you're just getting tired of not being able to keep up with any of your riding buddies and being the last person to pull into the gas station. So here's our top seven tips on becoming a better, faster, safer rider. And by better, we mean not falling down. Because when it comes to street riding, getting there is mandatory. Getting there first is optional. It sounds so basic, but if you want to be a faster, safer rider, the first step is to make sure that your bike is in tip-top shape. That means you need to have fresh tires that match, fresh brake pads, and your brake fluid needs to be clear, not all black and murky. No leaking fork seals, and your chain needs to be well lubed and adjusted. If you're on a nappy, poorly maintained, clapped out motorcycle, there's no way you're going to be a safe rider. Have you ever held on to a baby bird? No. Have you ever opened a Capri Sun? You know the moment when you put the straw into the packet? That's how tightly you should be hanging on to your handlebars. When we hold on tight, we lose fine motor control. Our arms get stiff, our shoulders get stiff, and it even makes it hard for us to turn our head and look through the turns. If we can't hang on to the motorcycle with our hands, how do we hang on to the bike? Well, we use our legs. The same way you would hang onto a horse, we squeeze our knees and legs against the gas tank, and that frees up our upper body to stay relaxed and deal with the motorcycle much more efficiently. Do you know when the first motorcycle race took place? The moment the second motorcycle was built. It's kind of ingrained into motorcycle culture. The need to keep up or the need to be first is actually a recipe for accidents. When riders start traveling at speeds faster than they are comfortable going, they start making more and more mistakes and their riding gets exponentially worse. We've seen riders go from riding beautifully to riding just the opposite of that just by increasing their pace by a few miles an hour. Twisting the throttle is easy, any monkey can do that. A willingness to twist the throttle doesn't make you a fast rider. Your bike might be fast, and you might be willing to take more risk than any of your riding buddies, but that doesn't make you fast. We all want to be faster riders, but what is faster anyway? Faster as compared to what? A brand new MSF graduate? Valentino Rossi? The rider you were 10 years ago? Don't make faster a goal. That's not the objective. Speed is a byproduct. Going fast. But remember, the car is you. You are the car, okay? Don't ride beyond your ability or go faster than you feel comfortable going. Don't let good riding technique go by the wayside out of a desire to keep up with that guy in front of you. The guy that's going faster may not be a better rider, they just might be willing to take more risk than you're willing to take. I would much rather ride with a slower rider who rides within their limits than to ride with a faster guy that's taking lots of risks any day of the week and twice on Sunday. All the time working with students, I'll see them completely screw up a section of the racetrack. And when I ask them about it, oftentimes they'll say, oh, well, I got offline, I couldn't figure out how to get back online. Do you remember that movie, The Matrix, when Neo is just starting to figure things out? Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. It's the same thing here, only there is no line. When we talk about the line, we're using it to describe where we've been. It's not a planning tool to identify or define where we want to go. It's not like the video games where there's that green line on the track that turns orange if you're going a little too fast and red if you're going way too fast. In the real world, there are lines all over the place. There's cracks and seams in the asphalt or those beloved tar snakes. None of them help us get through the corner. What we do have is we have entrances, apexes, and exits, all of which can be identified and defined. The entrance is the beginning of the turn, it's where we tip in. The apex is the point where we're closest to the inside of the turn. And the exit is the point where the motorcycle is straight up and down again. As you enter every turn, enter with a plan. Think ahead and identify your tip-in point. Typically, it's gonna be pretty far to the outside of the turn, so that affords you a lot of extra visibility. 
And then we want to stay wide and wait for our apex. Our apex is typically going to be about two thirds, sometimes even three quarters of the way through the turn. And then once we find our apex, we can look for our exit. And only once we can see the exit of the turn do we want to get back on the throttle and start accelerating. If you find yourself running wide on corner exits, that means you apex too soon. Try moving your apex later and later into the corner until you are no longer running wide. Why do so many riders hang their butt out of the seat? And why do so many other riders give advice to tell people to hang their butt out of the seat? Well, it's actually an antiquated riding technique back from the days of noodly steel frames and bias ply tires. But as frame technology has improved, and even more importantly, as tire technology has marched on, this ass off the seat riding technique has become ineffective and may actually increase rider risk. One of the big problems with this technique is that it disconnects the rider from the motorcycle so that if you hit a big bump, you can actually fall off the bike. The other problem with this technique is that riders tend to hang onto the handlebars tighter. And so it pulls their chest and head up above the gas tank, which increases the motorcycle's lean angle, which increases the level of risk for a given rate of speed. But let's back up a second. Why do so many riders hang their butt off the seat? In many cases, it's because they want to drag a knee. And if that's your goal, getting your butt way out of the seat will help you put your knee on the deck. But if we want to be faster and safer, then we need to approach this a little differently. The real reason the pros hang off the bike is to reduce lean angle so that they have more traction. And as it were, the best way to reduce lean angle is by where you place your head and chest, not your ass. We want to work on getting our head down and to the inside of the bike. As one of the most influential riding coaches in my life has always said, let the corner come to you. A corner isn't something to be attacked and dominated. It's the best part of riding. It's a partnership. We want to let it flow through us and bind us together. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. So yeah, be patient. Let the corner come to you. There's actually an old racing adage that goes, the fastest riders use their brakes the most. What do you suppose that means? Do you think that means they break really hard at the very last second? Actually, braking really hard at the last second is a racing technique and it's extremely risky. That's why watching motorcycle racing is so exciting. It's also why one of the most common single vehicle motorcycle crashes happen at the beginning or the middle of the turn. It's from entering turns too fast. The fastest riders use the brakes the most means Fast riders go to the brakes early and lightly and carry them for a, carry the brakes for a long time. If you brake to 99% of your braking pressure at the last second and that turn turns out to be tighter than you anticipated, what options do you have? But if you brake early and longer and lighter for a longer period of time and that turn turns out to be tighter than you anticipated, all you need to do is add a little bit more brake pressure. Or if the turn's not as tight as you anticipated, you can ease off the brakes a little bit. You have way more choices available to you if you go to the brakes early, light, and carry the brakes for a long time. Entering turns is far riskier than exiting turns. So be conservative with your corner entrance so you have more left over to accelerate hard out of the turn. You should always come out of every turn faster than you went into it. This is the golden rule of the fast and safe motorcyclist. Slow hands make fast riders. And the only way to have slow hands is to have a lot of visual lead. When we look down at the ground, our sense of speed is high, so our anxiety is high. But when we look off in the distance, our sense of speed is lower and our anxiety is lower. And we have a lot more time to deal with things as they come towards us. I know, I know, a lot of us, our greatest fear is gravel in the corner. So we tend to keep our focus down so that we can see the dirt. But the problem with that technique is if we're looking down for it, by the time we see it, it's kind of too late. We have very few choices left to us. But if we look further down the road, we want to be able to see that gravel as soon as humanly possible so we have the greatest amount of time to deal with it. The further ahead we look, the easier it is for us to have nice slow hands and slow inputs and slow inputs are less likely to upset the chassis or the grip of the tire. If there's only one thing you take away from this video, let it be looking further ahead. Slow hands make fast riders in visual lead. Nothing will benefit your riding more than a great visual lead. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you would like us to discuss any of these subjects in greater detail, leave a comment below and we might dedicate an entire video to just one of these techniques. Um, be sure to check out our YouTube channel or canechasers.net for more great content.